All right, so today I need to go ahead and expand the use of IAM GUI, the IAM immediate mode graphical user interface to give me a lot more ability for feedback and collecting information and editing information in the future. Right now I have the ability to, like I list all the entities, although I can't do anything with it, and I can also list the resources, and but I can't do anything with it. What I need to be able to do is to select, be able to select these, open up a sub window that has specific like component information for the entities and resources and all that stuff. So <clears throat> that's how I guess. Let's go. Let's uh, get started on it. So, all right. What's the first thing I'm going to need? I am going to need. to probably expand this. Um, I already have like the resource and entity list. Displaying the information on a single entity or resource should probably be based through this somehow. Um, okay, so of course we're gonna have to have like some kind of list, a vector in this case. Uh, re uh, let's do entity first, or actually, mm, okay, perhaps I should actually have something to display first, shouldn't I? Um, I'm not entirely sure how I want to like enmesh I'm GUI into these libraries. So for the moment, I'm going to put it here at the very top, uh, level application, and then I'll figure out how to disseminate it uh, to others in a moment. Or more realistically, another day. So let's actually grab this and let's just do, uh, what's the most common component? Position 3D. Every, practically everything, every entity that I have right now has that. So def md. Okay, uh, oops. We'll have, do I want to do like a class based? No, cause I'm just like, it wouldn't be part of a window. It'll be like a sub part of a window. So I don't even really need any state, would I? I, okay, perhaps just, um, start to throw position 3D pool. Is it, uh, probably just, we give <clears throat> an individual component at a time. And we have void, we say like render. Custom IM GUI for that. Okay. Let me just say data component. Something like that. We'll have position. Not quite. Position D. We include D. We want this. We also need to include three D. I need to add this, so we'll put it into a separate one for the moment to highlight the fact it's not really supposed to stay here. I'll probably need to add a uh, full position to the library because it's not included. It, it, it's, the, the, it's not part of the search path. Mm, it'll be part of here, so... Something like that, I think. 
Mm. Engine, I am GUI, full position. Uh, graphics, position, oh, component. Yeah, that'd be it. I think, okay, we include that. We've got to go ahead and we we'll, uh, then I'll need to have. So inside the window, what will be? It'll be like editor ID, then a separator, then position information, then another separator, then other stuff. So I don't need it. Okay, what do I need? I need um, text text just say the component type which is full position 3d input ooh, this may be it float 3 that sounds about right for position Okay, so be label, it's labeled as position. Maybe it's like that. We'll have P component position. I need a pointer to that. That's not quite gonna work because that's a uh, vec three. That's not really. Hmm. I don't know which one will be the first one either. Necessarily. So. Interpret cast. Of that is not going to work. Okay, do const. It can't be const because it's also an input. Oh, right, yes. Okay, we do that. <clears throat> that seems to work fine for that. We do similar for the, the quaternion. Orientation. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so I have that. That builds, right? Okay. So now I need to actually display this somehow. So we'll need, okay, let's see if we can split that up a little bit. We'll have uh, view entity data or component, yeah, entity component, yeah, okay. And we'll have what, just for entity ID. Uh, I'll probably need a bit more than that. Oh, you probably will need the open and the focus item. So I'll need like a, uh, a local struct of some sort. Yeah, okay. Um... Then say like a struct. Like that. It's composed of a entity ID. And the focus. Um, I need to include. 
that. We'll be passing that in. We need the, the okay, back to the, we need the list of this move would this change if hold on if I need to because I'll need references to things which can be changed uh, all right so what I'll probably want to do is have it as uh, like a perhaps do I want to do memory management for this not really I'll, I will use the smart pointer for this, the unique pointer. Make my life a bit easier because this is really not a fast path. This is entirely for development purposes. So if it's a bit slower, I'm all, not really going to care, but as long as it's still safe. Unique pointer. That will make sense. M displayed. M displayed, yeah, that makes sense. Right. Um, entity UI. That makes a bit more sense. All right. Yeah. So on to this side. How is this going to work? This is here. These are te these aren't formatted text. So this is the left side and the right side, if I recall correctly. If I hurry up and build and run. Uh, left side ID, right side editor name. Okay, yeah. I need. I want to change these to be selectable. So, I I did, I did this for something. Close that. Close that. ECS was it? I think it's ECS. No. Maybe not. Hmm. I swear I had something that okay. Selectable. Here we go. I did. For entity group list for these things. No, I just had it for the button in the main menu. Okay. I want to change that. I want these to be selectables. So how does this work? How does selectable work? Selectable. It's just what? The label, true or false for selectable, flags, okay. So we already have the text and we'll have to say like, for the moment we'll just put true, I guess. And it's a boolean because if if true, that probably means it was clicked or selected. So if that, we'll have to do something like selected equals true. Uh, we'll need some bit more stuff. So we have the entity. We uh, need a boolean. It's false. Yeah, whatever. And the same thing for this here. I don't know if I can make the entire row selected. Like a, um, and the, okay, I need to close this up first. I'll figure that out in a second. For the moment, 
Both of these are selectable. If you click them and select it becomes true. And then I do like if it has been selected, then I figure out like, do I add if it's not already in the vector? Otherwise, I uh, reset the focus to be true, I guess. Hmm. Yeah. Um. Oh, but I also need to determine like if it's already been selected, which means I already need to know if it's part of that list, wouldn't it? So I can't do like the find here. I have to do the find here. I need to get the entity and I need to find out right here if it's already been opened in a window. And then I can use that to set these true false va values instead. Okay. Uh, display data equals, what do we, false, uh, equals no pointer actually. Yeah, okay, then here I have to do... Hmm. It's data. go through each of these and I need to determine if t equals greater uh, t then this is it so I need to say p display data equals uh, this so it will dot get because it's the smart pointer not direct thing break out okay if this not equal no pointer, that means it's open. Okay, uh, if p display data not equal no pointer, and p display data focus equals true. This is a very rare operation, so. Otherwise, we, need, we want to add it to the, the uh, display list. So, n displayed in place back uh, this and it's a new one of these go straight in the smart pointer dot entity equals entity dot open equals true and dot focus is true then we close it up and then what then we finish the window. Okay, then at the bottom here, then we go through the displayed items. Stop begin. Not equals and display dot end. Because we'd also have to go, as we're going through, I can't do like a one of these simpler loops because I need to actually be able to erase this as I'm going through. Yeah, so that means I also can't uh, auto increment the iterator. Because if not display entity UI for iterator get, the then window has been closed. Then we then we then, then we want to iterate our equals and display dot erase this. Otherwise, then iterator plus, and that leads into the the display function down here with this.
if what not p data open you want to return false it means where it's no longer open close it and remove it otherwise we need to go with the usual we need to set up a new window which is set next window size with no uh, things data focus we got to set, set next window focus p data focus equals false otherwise we're gonna go we uh, gotta put up the the window title entity uh, plus the to string of the p data entity. Okay. in the window uh, so I want to add the editor name here not really no because I can put that I can put that as a part of the content rather uh, sorry, window title, not data. So let's begin the title, the open ability of the thing. No flags for now. If that, that means it's collapsed, so we just end it. Turn false. Wanna okay now we do the editor ID here. exists and otherwise it's just blank so it's not really too big of a deal now the interesting thing position 3d I need to get the component if it if first of all if it exists I need that means I need to retrieve the pool from the simulation state and then I need to go through the pool and find out if the component exists here so hmm I'm gonna need a bit more stuff I'm gonna need to include Component three D pool. I'm also going to need uh, from the main application. I have a function up here to get a specific component pool in a templated manner. So I'll do that. Um, Nope. Here. Put this here for the moment. So 
I need to get I need to get the pool. Which will be so that using the component pool, so MP sim that component pools Not data. Dot size again this is all temporary these things won't actually be staying here I'll need to kind of abstract it away I'll probably have to have some kind of like um parallel system almost to simulation state just for I'm GUI stuff to register to be able to go through components and resources and oh this, the complexity multiplies before my eyes unfortunately okay let's just get this one more. so auto offset we need to find out if it's part of it so p pool find um, the entity if offset not equal, I believe the invalid offset is the size of the pool right now as well. I should probably fix that or change it. We're getting the first component out of that. Pool plus offset. The pointer. We've got a separator. Uh, whatever the function was, which was that p component. If it is modified, actually, uh, is there a way to determine? I'm interested what true and false does. I'm hoping that if true is happens then that means it's been modified which means that I can also like ping things to say hey it's been modified reset or something along those lines um, okay okay just like find all locations where this is Exclude that. Okay, we've got demos and stuff. Uh, okay, that's not what I'm looking at. But true do come on okay uh, I, I can figure out I can find out in a moment quite frankly first of all let's make sh sure it's actually going to display stuff it's probably a good place to start with so what's wrong with this candidate function not viable no known conversion from that right it's that right it's one of these it's a unique pointer Return true. If we're here, oh, we also need to end the window. Display entity UI. That's that's this. Really.
really. Maybe, no. Leave it as void. Okay, uh, right, it's not const. Okay, selectable looks all right. And so does the rest of this. Uh, the camera is here. Let's make sure that's actually following along with the camera. Yes, it is. Wonderful. All right. That, that, whatever this is doesn't have anything which is Good. Oh, and the editor IDs are correct, right? Yeah. Oh, one. Mesh B. Uh, B2 is O2. Yeah. Okay. That's a good start. Hmm. Oh, um, I wonder, hold on, how does this work? If this is not open, it just returns. So if I was to close, if I open that up and open that up and close this, they also go away. Yeah, that's not going to, that's not going to, that's not going to work. Um, mm -hmm. I guess I'll just have that. I'll just have this other function that kind of sits down here. Otherwise, you call it down here, and all it does is this. So, put this in a subway of something like this for that. Okay, put that as a separate. sure it works mm hmm there we go good 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 um okay uh let's add another one and then I'll because do I have any resources really to add offhand that are easy? Not really. Okay. I'm going to do what's the other big one or one that's easy to do physics. Actually, no. Do I have? I don't. None of these are actually doing physics things right now. So that's not going to work very well at all. But they would be simple to do, wouldn't they? Hmm. Wouldn't they? Hmm. Yeah, well, yeah, okay. <clears throat> Let's do a rigid body, I think. It's interesting, it is the component, right? Yeah. So it's literally just mass, collision shape, and this, which will have a bunch of information inside of it. 
And this would have to be like a link to the resource. Okay. Uh, no, we just need a struct, right? We just need this as a for declared struct. We'll position 3D, which is like this. For the moment, I'll deal with, I'll use C++ as overload. For the early bring up stage. Text. Do I have no uh, input text? Right. Input. Uh, float. And it's this. Okay, the location of this. This isn't going to work because the, the is, because the data is always going to be moving around, isn't it? Is it? Uh, I wonder how it actually works. If it's immediate mode. UI, then perhaps like it, it just happens here, like any input stuff. So I don't actually have to worry about um, having the, the pointer location be consistent across multiple uh, oh, I hope, I really hope. But that wouldn't make the most sense. That would. Okay, I'll just put uh, text for now. I'll need to add physics to this, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't actually have anything with a physics component attached yet, but I can do that real fast. I need something. Or the render mesh, sure. 
Uh, floor, I don't even... Yeah, I, I didn't finish that, did I? So I'm pretty sure we had a fit rigid body, we had a mass of... I don't know, four? One, whatever. It's massive zero for the moment. With the... Oh, come on, come on, come on, what... Ribs, what, what is the layout of this thing? Which body? Okay. Collision shape is just... Okay, collision underscore shape. Do I have one? Do I even have one? Test collision shape, yes. Oh, I don't know if that works. Uh, 17. Hmm, that may actually be true. I may want to change this up to be hexadecimal representations rather than decimal representations. Yeah, okay. Now that I think about it... Okay, but we do have something in the render mesh, a whole three. Uh, except it doesn't. Because... Why? Reading this, okay. All right. That. Of course, I didn't actually, I created, <clears throat> I created this, I didn't actually put it into place yet, did I? So not very useful yet. Basically the same. Except, got that. Body pool. That's all this except it's not this, it's just P component by itself. In this case, yep. Okay, maybe it's just not attached to anything. So what what does it matter? Uh, unless... Okay, it just doesn't seem to do much of anything at all. Oh, hello. This one does. Interesting. Okay, so we kind of have something going on here. So that, okay, um, zero, 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 great. Uh, this one doesn't have physics, so if we were to move this, oh, 
Okay. So we're kind of there for this one. With that. And so it's the one that doesn't, it doesn't actually affect is the physics one. Just getting a reset. Hmm, because I don't really have any mechanism for passing any changes to the physics system right now. The same thing with this. I can change this all I want, but unless it was the initialization of the physics object, I don't really pass that through. So, changes to do in the future. But, for the moment, uh, this works. Okay, uh, so, I don't have a, gr I don't really have a way to get this out of the main application, the main bring up application. Not yet. What is, uh, ah, okay, there's one other thing I can probably do here is I can put the same thing as the entity list for the resource list. Get at least this frame, this, this separate display windows thing going. So, here we go. Resource list. Uh, actually, no, it's already here. <clears throat> Silly me. So what do I need? I need the struct. I need the include. sense display entity display okay 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 so to the resource list Save it so that these things fall uh, fall through. Resource uh, display data. Same stuff, just about. Well, right, I need the list. <clears throat> Bunch of unique pointers. Or you change the name in a moment. Display resource. Just guy like that. It's a Boolean type.
Okay, uh, from the application, I should be able to grab resource pools. Like that. So basically the same thing here almost. Okay, we got that. It's instead of this, it's resource. Resource name map, yes. Resource, resource name map. It's not that, it's not that. I don't actually have one quite yet. I need to add collision shape. Was it render custom design GUI? Like that, or rather, nope. At the moment, it's just that until we create the source. So we got our GUI, we'll have text, which is going to say this is a collision shape. I don't really know of what else I actually have to work with here. I mean, I get a resource based stuff, counts, load state. Hmm. Oh yeah, add it to be compiled up, compiled in. Mm, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, for our collision shape, it's, I don't really have much. Fine. Um, referenced percentage U, GP resource, get ref count.
put these together really. So you just count that. Okay. So anything else can really do or that I really want to do at the moment, not really. I just need this to make sure that it works realistically for the moment. So back to the resource list, I need to Resource pool that please got the rest of that. Mm, oh, that and that. Oh, that. Okay, resource. Uh, This just gets it, auto resource. It's a bit easier. So for that, then do this for P resource. Oh, I also need to change these to be selectable as well, and all that stuff. Yes. Okay. So entity, here we go. It's almost the exact same thing, except just like getting stuff from different locations, realistically. I might be able to merge these later. Later, if I can figure it out. Figure out a nice way to do it. If selected stuff down here, all right. Just under an hour. Wow, this is actually going a lot faster than I had expected. Uh, that, yeah, has basically nothing except the editor ID. That has just nothing at all. That's great. Is it resizable? It doesn't have to be, I guess. Where is... Would it be that? Would this be it? No, this wouldn't be it. Okay, where is... Number 17. 
So we've got 15, 16, then we're missing 17. Where's 17? Hold on. Uh, right. What? Is, like, resource just stops at 17. Because I'm doing everything manually, I keep screwing things up like that. So it just counted up to 17, but not actually include, there it is. Uh, yes, great. That's wrong. So this thing should be using it. Has that collision shape, so. Uh -uh. Wrong O. Okay, uh, resource list. Okay, collision, uh, rigid body, that'll be, it's not that, it's going to be a string, and it's going to be, you know, uh, OID. That. Like that. There's dot data, because it's a string. Hopefully, and eventually what's going to happen is that you'll be able to click that. It'll open up this little window. This stuff, which is obviously not correctly counted, but... Uh, once I get this UI a little bit more fixed up, it'll be a lot easier to start cross-referencing all this stuff and getting it far a bit more correct, as well as I need to obviously add more tests. Unit and the integration test to make sure it's actually doing what I expect it to actually be doing because it's obviously not doing what I hoped it would be doing. But as a start, this is good. So I'm going to take a little bit of a I'm not exactly sure where to go from here because now what I need to do is I need to be is I need to kind of split this. Up. I need to be able to put these into other libraries and bring them in without having like uh, these hard coded into this class. Obviously, that's hard coding them in here is not going to work in the long run. I need to be able to bring them in, and of course I can't have part of the actual like class positional physics class it'd have to be like it'd have to be separate like the like yaml already is it'd be like libs i'm gooey or something like that you know have to be separate brought in separately which also means like um uh, i need some kind of yeah like i think i said earlier i need a kind of parallel system in the faux simulation which will allow the register and deregistration of i am gooey processing elements or something like that but i'll deal with that after i take a bit of a break cheers